Hi folks, it's Dakota Cohen here from Cohen Farm, and I need your help with something. As some of you may know, uh, two years ago, we almost went to jail uh, uh, for harvesting our animals on farm in an ethical fashion and providing that to consenting adults. We had signed contracts and everything. They knew exactly what we were doing. We almost went to jail for that. Now, that law that almost you know, put me in prison is about to change. It's, it's about to expire this July, and because of the incredible pressure that you know, myself, uh, other producers, our customers have been putting on the government, they're actually talking about amending the law and making it legal for me to do, and for other producers, to do what we were doing before. And actually, they're taking it a step further because b before, we, were having, we had a provincially inspected uh, butcher shop who had a mobile abattoir. They were coming out to our farm, harvesting the animals, and then taking them back to a provincially inspected butcher shop the same way that you would, you would pro process a wild deer or something like that. Um, so in that way, the, the meat was still being inspected. Now, the, the, the law that's being proposed now in July when it comes up for renewal is the, that what I'm doing behind me here where I'm processing my own meat on farm for my, for my personal consumption, they're talking about making that legal for me to sell to the public uh, as long as it's, it's, it's farm gate and, and direct consumers. This is an absolute game changer for... Uh, small-scale regenerative agriculture and and I need your help to make sure that that this thing comes about and hopefully that we can actually get some other amendments to the law uh, to the Meat Inspection Act and maybe some other laws related to food sovereignty changed as well so here's what I need you to do there's a link to uh, the the survey that is being put up by the Alberta government right now asking for uh, information and um, Basically, to, to see if there's, there actually is interest in getting this law changed and, and amending it with, with their, um, their recommendations to allow farm gate on farm harvested meat to be sold. Um, <clears throat> so if you take five minutes and, uh, and click the link for the, the survey that I've got next to the video here, you can go to the website, fill it out, and, um, and the, there's, a, there's a text box where they ask you, you know, why is this important? And uh, I'm going to give you six reasons right now why changing the Meat Inspection Act in Alberta this July 2020 is absolutely essential for uh, basically the future of, of you know, agriculture, humanity, all these different things. So the very first reason is nutrient density. There's been a ton of research that has shown that when an animal is stressed, they release you know, cortisol, adrenaline, a whole bunch of hormones, stress hormones into their bodies and, and when they're killed, that, those hormones get trapped in the meat and it physically changes the, the texture, the, the chemical makeup, and the nutrient density, the, the, the quality of the food that you're eating. If anybody's ever eaten um, uh, a deer that uh, you know, was, was wounded and ran for five miles before it dropped, that meat is almost inedible. And because our domesticated animals have you know, suppressed fight or flight responses, it's not quite as strong. But even I was, as a result of this journey that I've gone on, you know, trying to get uh, on-farm harvested meat, I've talked to a lot of different processors and, and people that have worked in the industry. And uh, one of the practices, apparently, when um, if an animal uh, is overly stressed while they're harvesting it you know, at a provincially or a federally inspected plant, is they'll inject it with uh, different enzymes to help break down the, the, the basically the, the tension in the animal. You know, if, if you're stressed, you, your body gets all tight and the meat is tough. And so, so um, the, the, the very first reason why changing the Meat Inspection Act is important is for nutrient density. The, the second reason is about environmental regeneration. So there's a huge amount of, of an animal that is inedible for humans. And if, if you're taking that meat to, you know, off farm to, transport it to an abattoir where it's processed, all that, those inedible products can't be returned back to the nutrient cycle of the farm, which actually, you know, over years helps to build soil health, which increases the, the nutrient density of the grass and the grains that the animal's eating, which then in turn in, increases the nutrient density of the meat that we're eating. <clears throat> so we've got nutrient density of the meat, environmental uh, regeneration, and um, there's also, uh, the, the third one is, is ethics. And so this is something that regardless of whether or not you eat meat or, or think it's okay to eat meat, um, the, for, for people who do eat meat, 
uh, they should have the choice to be able to, to make sure that their animals are harvested with as much respect and reverence as possible. You know, there's a lot of farmers talk about how, you know, my animals only have one bad day in their life. When we were harvesting our animals on farm, our animals had zero bad days in their life. From, they were born on the farm, they died on the farm, and there was, because of our, the handling system that we had set up, basically the, the animals came to eat one morning and they got, they got stunned and that was it. There was, no bad, there was no bad day. They weren't being transported down the highway at 100 miles an hour and, and taken to a strange place that they'd never been before, around strange people that they'd never seen before, to be you know, herded into, even if it's a really good facility, herded into a, an area where they're then you know, shot and stunned and everything else. So, um, the, the, and this all relates back to the nutrient density as well. But, but even beyond that, if we're, gonna, if we're gonna consume meat as, as a species, we should do it in a way that is as respectful and humane as possible. And the, the only way, I'm just gonna stress, the only way you can have humanely raised meat is if, if the animal is harvested on farm. There is no way you can transport an animal to even the, the best Temple Grandin designed uh, stress-free livestock, I don't, I don't care, there's no way you can do it um, where, where there's zero stress for the animal unless that animal is harvested on the, the land that it was born on in an environment that it was familiar with and surrounded by people that, that they, they knew. <clears throat> so the, um, the, the fifth one is, uh, is about uh, financial sustainability. So, this, and, and I've, I've mentioned this before, but the, the, new, the new law that's being proposed is actually going to allow small-scale farmers to harvest their own animals on farm and process their own animals up to a certain point. You can't grind meat or uh, cure or do any like pro, um, uh, basically food, food processing, but if you're just going to cut and wrap the meat, uh, according to the laws that they're, they're talking about changing, this would be legal. So this is our, our pig for ourselves, and, and we're able to do this because we, we have a farm and, and we have the facilities to do this. But uh, if in the future, um, the, we could be doing this for our customers if they, if they so choose. And, and, and if they trust us to, that we're gonna be doing everything you know, safe and, and sanitary, anything like that. But <clears throat> for, for small scale farmers uh, who, are, who are raising livestock, you know that probably a third to 50% of the cost of, of a pound of meat goes directly to the butcher. And it should be because th there's a lot of work and, and a lot of skill and a lot of you know, infrastructure that needs to, to, they need to be compensated for their efforts. But for a small scale producer to invest in a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff like we did, you know, a bandsaw um, and, uh, and some knives, you can, you can take that 30 to 50% of the cost of your animal and, and put that money in your pocket, which is gonna really improve the financial sustainability of small-scale regenerative farms. So that's the fifth one. And the, the sixth one, and, uh, and this also applies whether or not you think eating meat or, is wrong um, or not, is, is sovereignty. So the fact that we live in a democratic society in the 21st century where the government stipulates what you can and cannot put in your body, even though it does not harm anybody else, is against, uh, against our basic rights and freedoms. And so the fact that my customers signed a contract with me, they, they entered into a private contract, and we were still told to cease and desist and, and, and threatened with, with legal action and jail time for practicing our, our basically basic sovereignty uh, should be abhorrent to anybody who values freedom. And so <clears throat> if you care about these six things, the nutrient density of your meat, the ethics, the environmental sustainability, the financial sustainability, um, the, the food sovereignty, and, um, and, the, and, and everything else. Uh, and, and if you guys have any other ideas, I want you to take those, those ideas, put them into the survey for why you think it's important for us to be able to access uh, on-farm harvested meat and even on-farm processed meat um, and, uh, and we can get this law changed this July. It's, it's only a few months away, and come you know, this fall, when our next batch of beef and pork is ready, we could be, like anybody in Alberta could have access to, to, to truly ethical, truly nutrient-dense food that is, is gonna be healthy for the people and healthy for the planet. Um, so this is a really big deal. I, I really need your help with this. I've already completed the survey myself. I'm sending it out to my newsletter. Um, it, if you might be watching this right now, if, if you're part of my newsletter, 
please take the time to, to fill this out. There's gonna be, at least for my newsletter alone, there'll be a couple thousand people that are gonna see this. And if everybody did that, uh, we could send a message. And, and I truly believe that the reason why the government is proposing this, this amendment to the law um, is because of the pressure that, my, that myself, my customers, and other producers have been putting on government regulators for the last couple years um, to, uh, to get this stuff changed. I actually, because of the, the, the fact that we were fined and I went public with it, um, well, well, we were threatened with a fine and jail time, I had other farmers reach out to me who, who told me that they actually were fined $10,000 because they were doing the same thing that we were doing. Um, so this, this is... Um, it's fantastic that our government's listening to us. Um, we, we, we need to continue to send them the message that, uh, that, that food sovereignty and, and, and ethical meat um, is, is, is really important to us. And, um, and we're going to keep working towards the, the future that we want. Now, I just remember there's, there's another piece that, I, that uh, a friend of mine who, who actually uh, is, is a butcher himself. He, he runs a, a um, provincially inspected butcher shop here in town. He was actually one that informed me about the, this, the changes in the, the law that they're proposing. And he asked me to also ask for another favor, which is when you're filling out the, the survey, make a note of the fact that uh, you think it's important for um, this kind of, of um, uninspected meat uh, to be eligible for consumption for places like homeless shelters um, and women's shelters and, and, and places like that. Um, uh, I, I, I'm not aware of, of, because I don't work in the, the meat industry, but this butcher has informed me that there is an incredible amount of, of, of meat that is perfectly fit for human consumption that is being wasted every year uh, because it doesn't fit within you know, one of the boxes of the government right now. And he's been trying for years to try to get th these laws changed um, so that th there could be some kind of an exemption so that um, this kind of meat could be, could be made available to, to people who, who need it the most. Um, and so if, you know, I, I gave you, I've given you seven reasons why this, uh, this on-farm harvested meat is, is really important. Um, you, can, you can pick and choose you know, one or two of them, or you can put all of them in, into, the, into the survey box, and we can send a message to our government that this is important to us. And, uh, and who knows, you know, maybe this, this uh, July, we'll be able to you know, have on-farm harvested meat, and maybe by next year, if we continue to send messages, we can uh, get the milk monopoly abolished here in Alberta and across Canada so that consumers can have access to raw milk just like I do myself. Every day I drink, I drink raw milk, raw cheeses, uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic for all other reasons that I, I mentioned today. Um, so this is a step in the right direction. And if, if, we, if we take five minutes out of your day, uh, help me out. And uh, we can get this law changed. And who knows, maybe next year we can get the, a few of these other meat inspection or these, a few of these other food sovereignty issues addressed as well. Thanks so much for your time. And we'll talk to you later. Actually, I'll, I'll just show you guys some of the meat that we're processing here if you're interested. That's what a whole pig looks like. So we've got our, our uh, side here that's going to be turned into bacon and ribs. We've got our shoulder roasts, our leg. I'm going to actually be uh, curing this for, um, uh, to make some prosciutto. Our chops, we've got some beautiful fat here. Um, we've got, uh, you know, leg roast, our hocks, the jowl. I'm also going to be turning that into uh, some nice cured meats. And um, uh, again, this is all for home consumption. But uh, in the future, uh, you guys could be enjoying some of this stuff too. All right, we'll talk to you later.